recently, just recently, the bombing of Libya in 2011. And this isn't the complete list. I'm joined now by presidential historian Douglas Brinkley. So, Doug, one of the uh, criticisms that's coming with regard to what the president is doing now, and that is seeking Congress before acting, is that all of those erosions of the Constitution that gave Congress the power to okay war are actually now snapping back. That the president has done more to turn that around than any other president since Truman uh, in the days of Korea. Do, do you see that as a as a, a viable critique? It's an interesting critique, but um, you know, President Obama is working by expediency now. He's doing what he needs to do to uh, confront Syria. If it had not been for the British Parliament uh, rejecting the idea of a military strike on Syria, I doubt the president would have gone this way. The United States would have had Britain, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, France, would have had a coalition of sort and could have, have, have done it. But without the UN, without NATO, without the Arab League, he felt he needed to go to Congress. And just minutes ago, when Speaker Boehner um, vigorously supported Barack Obama's strategy, I think you see the president, as of a minute ago, gaining real momentum for the case of striking on Syria, because unlike John McCain or Lindsey Graham, um, there were no slaps at President Obama from Boehner. He came on as if I had his best friend and ally was Barack Obama. You'll now see in Congress a fight between the Rand Paul Tea Party Libertarians and John Boehner, who represents mainstream Republicanism. So in an unusual way, the president is creating a, a, a fight within the Republican Party that's going to be airing out here in the next week. Okay, well, as we await the answer, um, just a very quick answer from you, if I can. If Congress says no, does that give carte blanche to rogue leaders around the world to do as they please to their people? No, we, we, the, yes, it, it's the, you know, the, as Nancy Pelosi said a little bit ago, chemical weapons, uh, it's not Barack Obama's red line, it was the world community, civilization's red line. And when it got crossed, and it had been crossed before in Syria, and there's criticism uh, directed at President Obama for that, but the gassing of these children and the fact that people are going to do nothing, and the president needs to do a better case now of explaining what is at stake. There's a Cold War going on in the Middle East. We have allies like Turkey and Saudi Arabia. But on the other side is Russia and Iran, and it's all playing out in Syria. So I think you're seeing the president really arguing the geopolitical case here to these congressmen. And so far, the last two days, he's getting the key Republicans on board. All right, uh, Doug Brinkley, thank you. And the images are just harrowing. We were just seeing some of them as you were stating your, uh, your case and, and giving us your insight. Thank you, Doug Brinkley. It's good to see you. We appreciate that. Um, I should also just let you know a little bit of additional breaking news. Eric Cantor has